Have you ever heard of the Solomon Brothers? Did you know that the investment banking firm Solomon Brothers was once the largest on Wall Street? At one point in time, the company was an industry leader, but today they operate under just a division of Citigroup Bank. But how did an investment firm with such prominence and success end up being just a division of another firm? Let's take a look back at history and see what caused the rise and fall of the once prominent Solomon Brothers. We'll explore how they went from being industry icons to deflated bags after a series of high-profile scandals rocked their empire. Hello friends and welcome back to the billionaire status. If you are new here, hi and welcome to the channel. Thank you for your time. You won't regret it. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, business and of course, billionaires. Now let's get into the video. We hope you enjoy. About the Solomon Brothers the Solomon Brothers were founded in 1910 by three brothers, Percy, Arthur, and Herbert Solomon. The company began as a small Wall Street trading firm and quickly grew to become a powerful player in the securities industry. They were one of the most successful and well-known investment firms on Wall Street in the 1980s. They made billions of dollars by taking calculated risks in the stock market, and in 1931, Solomon Brothers underwrote its first public offering. $1.5 million worth of bonds for the city of New York. The company continued to grow throughout the 1930s and 1940s, weathering the stock market crash of 1929 and navigating the challenges posed by World War II. By the 1950s, Solomon Brothers had established itself as a major force on Wall Street. In 1959, the company went public, raising $22 million in an initial public offering IPO. In the 1960s and 70s, Solomon Brothers solidified its position as one of the leading investment banks on Wall Street. The company was involved in some of the biggest deals of the era, including serving as the lead underwriter for Walt Disney's 1971 IPO. Even Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway invested a whopping $700 million in Solomon Brothers, giving Buffett a 7% stake in the company. The Rise of the Solomon Brothers the Solomon brothers began their careers working for their father's small brokerage firm on Wall Street. In 1910, they took over the business and renamed it Solomon Brothers. The company initially focused on trading government bonds and later expanded into other areas, including corporate bonds and equities. During World War I, the firm helped the United States government raise money by selling war bonds to the public. The 1920s were a period of great expansion for the Solomon Brothers. The brothers took the company public in 1922 and used the proceeds to buy a seat on the New York Stock Exchange. This gave them direct access to some of the biggest and most influential companies in America. They also started making a name for themselves as expert advisors on complex financial transactions. In 1931, Solomon Brothers advised AT&T on its successful $215 million bond bond offering, which at the time was the largest corporate bond issue in history. This deal helped solidify the Solomon Brothers' reputation as one of Wall Street's top firms. The following year, they advised New York City on its $500 million bond offering to refinance its debt, the largest municipal bond issue ever completed up to that point. The 1950s and 60s were boom years for Solomon Brothers. The firm went public again in 1957 and used the proceeds to fuel its expansion into new areas such as venture capital and international finance. In 1969, the Solomon Brothers merged with another prominent investment bank, Fibro Corporation. The merger made Solomon Brothers one of the largest and most diversified financial institutions in America. Solomon Brothers in 1980 In 1980, Solomon Brothers were one of the largest investment banks on Wall Street. As such, they had a lot of influence in the marketplace. They decided to use this influence to their advantage by cornering the market in the United States Treasury bonds. In order to do this, they first had to increase their holdings of Treasury bonds. They did this by buying up bonds from other investors and then selling them back to the government at a higher price. This created an artificial shortage of bonds, which drove up the price. Once they had control of the market, they began manipulating prices to their benefit. For example, they would sell bonds when prices were high and buy them back when prices were low. 
This allowed them to earn millions in profits while others lost money. However, their reign of greed was not going to last long. The beginning of the end. It all began with a simple change in treasury auctions. In order to reduce the budget deficit, the United States Treasury started selling bonds through an auction process instead of through direct negotiations with dealers like Solomon Brothers. This change meant that Solomon Brothers could no longer purchase large blocks of bonds at a discount and then resell them for a profit. In response to this change, Solomon Brothers began submitting bids for more bonds than they actually wanted to purchase. By doing so, they were able to drive up the price of the bonds and subsequently make a profit. This strategy worked for a while, but eventually caught up with them. In 1991, rumors began circulating that the brothers were engaging in this type of behavior, and this caused other investors to shy away from participating in treasury auctions. However, they hit a major setback when it was revealed that one of its bond traders had been illegally buying and selling bonds. The U.S. Treasury caught wind of what was going on and launched an investigation into Solomon Brothers' activities. When it became clear that wrongdoing had indeed occurred, the U.S. Treasury suspended Solomon Brothers from participating in future auctions, and several top executives at Solomon Brothers were forced to resign. The company ultimately agreed to pay a $290 million fine to settle civil and criminal charges brought against it by the United States government. The events that unfolded at Solomon Brothers sent shockwaves through the financial world and ultimately triggered a recession. In response to the crisis, the U.S. Congress passed sweeping reforms that introduced greater transparency and oversight into the financial system. The actions of the Solomon brothers in 1980 had far-reaching implications. Their manipulation of the market caused many investors to lose money and led to stricter regulation on Wall Street. In 1997, Solomon Brothers were acquired by Citigroup for $9 billion, and today it operates as a division of Citigroup known as Solomon Smith Barney. Solomon Brothers Acquisition by Citigroup On September 21, 1998, one of the largest financial mergers in history was announced. Citigroup Incorporated would be acquiring Solomon Brothers Incorporated for $9 billion. The merger made Citigroup the largest security firm in the world and cemented its position as a leading player on Wall Street. Citigroup was created in 1998 through the merger of Citicorp and Travelers Group. At the time of the merger, Citicorp was the world's largest banking holding company with assets of over $700 billion, while Travelers Group was a leading provider of insurance and other financial services with over $200 billion in assets. Together, the two firms had nearly $1 trillion in assets and 350,000 employees in 100 countries around the world. In September 1998, Citicorp and Travelers Group announced that they would be merging with Solomon Brothers to form what would eventually be known as Citigroup. The new company would have over $700 billion in assets and would be the largest security firm in the world. The deal was approved by shareholders from all three companies and completed on November 10, 1998. Solomon Brothers Revival 2022 it has been about 20 long years since the fall of the Solomon Brothers. Once the powerful firm on Wall Street, Solomon was brought down by scandal and greed. But now, Solomon is back. In 2022, the firm will make its triumphant return to Wall Street. The new Solomon Brothers are headed up by CEO William Sinclair and COO John Thane. Both Sinclair and Thane are veterans of Goldman Sachs, another powerhouse on Wall Street. Under their leadership, Solomon is returning to its roots as an aggressive trader willing to take risks. The new Solomon is already making waves on Wall Street with its daring trades and high-profile hires. The return of the Solomon brothers is sure to shake up Wall Street. With its aggressive trading style and willingness to take risks, the new Solomon is already making its presence felt on the street. Only time will tell if the new Solomon can live up to the legacy of its namesake, but one thing is for sure. The return of the Solomon Brothers is big news for everyone involved in the financial world. This brings us to the end of the video for today. If you enjoyed our content, please like the video. Also consider subscribing and turning on the bell notification to make sure you don't miss our next video. Thank you so much for your time, and we'll see you next time on The Billionaire Status.